Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Georgie Newbury, and I run Common Farm Flowers here between Fashionable Broughton and Up and Coming Wincanton in sunny Somerset. And today I have a commission to make two vases, altar vases, for a harvest supper, harvest festival in a church. And so I thought it was an ideal opportunity to film the process. Uh, so that you could see how I think through church flowers, uh, making a matching pair, all of that sort of uh, thing. I'm sorry, I've got really very glamorous hair today, but there you go. It's Friday and we're pushing on through. Um, if you enjoy these clips, please do subscribe somewhere. There's a subscription button. Press the bell icon and we'll be telling you when we have another clip out. And if the hints and tips I give you as we go through are useful, then do please buy me a coffee. Uh, the link is in the bio of my of the main bio on my channel, um, and you can buy me a coffee there if you like, which I really appreciate a lot. Those of you who do, and um, it really encourages me to make more of these little clips. <laughs> so it's a two way street. So thank you very much for those who have bought coffees. Uh, thank you very much for those who will buy coffees. Thank you to those who buy coffees again. Anyway. Onwards and upwards, enough of this banging on. So, I have got two vases, the same size. Uh, they're good. Um, I, I use these vases a lot. They're hurricane, hurricane lamp vases. They're solid, so they're easy to move. Nice clean glass. I like glass because it shows, I don't know, makes the whole thing look lighter and demonstrates that we don't use floral foam. No, no, not yet. Not anymore. Um, and they're quite squat, so they will sit on the altar, altar vases. You've got to have room for um, communion and all the other things that happen on the altar. So you don't want to make anything too big, but uh, they'll be pretty and hopefully interesting for the Harvest Festival. I'm going to start with my foliage. Always start with foliage, make a nest with your foliage, and then you can fill up the vases as you go. And it being harvest... <laughs> My foliage uh, comes in in a, my trolley. Can you hear the rattling trolley? That's the trolley. Um, so I'm going to start with branches of apples, crab apples. Can you see? Um, not an enormous amount. And I'm going to take any spare foliage and spare apples off. And put them in the compost because I don't want okay, apples can make the water a bit yellow, um, and I don't want the water to be too yellow. But also because these are very woody stems, somewhere on my snips. Gooey. Where have I put my snips? Anyone see my snips? Hmm. How annoying. They must be around somewhere. I've only just been outside to cut these bits. Oh well, luckily I have another pair of snips, so we'll use the other one. Um, so when you're using woody stems, uh, cut across the wood at an angle, sharp angle. You see the sharp angle? And cut up the stem to increase the drinking surface area for the drinking of the plant. And I'm not really going to worry too much as I start about what this looks like because the material, I trust the material to work together. And at the beginning, a stem is not going to stand up straight. But as I add all the material, it's going to help everything else stand up straight. So I haven't got exactly the same size bits of apple, but I've got equal numbers of stems. So I'm going to just pop those in. Each stem is being, I'm snipping up the stem to make more drinking area. I'm going to let those apples hang out. Let it all hang out. Um, whichever way they want to go. I'm conscious these are going at the back 
of the altar. So I don't want too much coming forward. I can have things going sideways, but also it doesn't really matter what they look like behind because they'll be against a wall. Um, so I need to worry about the back of these arrangements too much. Keep snipping off the sides. I've got to do this quickly because I have a hot date to go and see a fabulous lady moved into the village a year or two ago and built, has built the most incredible house, uh, which I've seen as it's been being built, but I haven't seen it um, nearly ready to be moved into. So I'm going to ping over there in a minute and I've got to, to have a quick look. So there may be a flowery thing going on, which will be cheerful. Um, always happy to help people with their flowery projects. Uh, there we go, up the stem. And you can see they're not the same, but they have, there's something about them, because they have the same number of stems in them, the weight is the same. I will pay attention, this is the back of the, these are the backs of the leaves, and I'll pay attention to that you see the front. And that may mean that they have to go the other way, but I don't mind that. But I always put, if I'm doing, if I'm doing a matching pair, they don't match. They're not too matchy-matchy. But I will make them next door to each other and add stem for stem. And that way you'll get a balance in weight. So now I've got this lovely black elder. Great colour. Um, obviously elder, it is very important that you ask the elder if it minds if you cut. Um, any of it and I'm always assuming very very important you ask you can't just go and cut elder oh no um, and I always assume that if the elder minded so I, literally I say out loud like a like a mad person hello do you mind if I cut a bit and so far the elder has never said anything um, but I am a bit wary of cutting too much of my elder because I feel as though the elder might really complain there, so I've snipped up all those stems to make a bit of a longer, more drinking area. And I'm just going to pop these in pretty much any old how, because they're going to do, they're, they're not only are they attractive, but they um, are making a bit of a crisscross in the jar in the vase and that is giving me something one two three four five six and that's giving me a nice uh, structure for adding when I add the flowers in right moving on my next material are roses I know it's <laughs> late season I love doing this Look, and you may remember at the beginning of the season, I was cutting rose foliage because the colour's so great. Well, here we go again. Cutting rose foliage because the colour's so great. The roses are good too, but I'm, I'm really interested in the foliage here. So again, I cut this yesterday, so I'm snipping up the stems just to refresh the drinking area of them. And pop that lovely foliage in. And I'm just making a mix of foliage really to start with. The roses are an added bonus themselves. But it's the foliage I'm most interested in. And other fo the other foliage I've got, I'm going to wait. I'm just gonna have a look at it. I've got some amazing trails of amaranthus and it's you know you grow your amaranthus and you spend your life cutting it so that you have shorter stems and smaller stems and kind of working it to work in bouquets but then sooner or later somebody rings up and says can you do me something for the harvest festival and you're like oh so yes absolutely i can so i'm going to give each side a nice chunk 
of amaranth because the dingle dangle of it is um, really fun. Where's my, where are my snips? I spend my life looking for my snips. I spend more time looking for my snips than I do anything else. So we'll tuck you in, in there. And they, they, can, they can have these arranged <laughs> on, I'm imagining the altar's gonna have lovely clean linen cloth and the amaranth can be sort of arranged artistically around. Um, so, my next, I'm going to put a little bit more, row, a little, a few more roses in and simply because, and they're not really going in for the roses, they, I mean obviously the roses are lovely, uh, but I want more strength and structure so that when I add my dahlias, they have something that's really going to hold them up because my dahlias have got very heavy heads and the roses are going to give a nice base for the dahlias to stand in. Worth checking, we've had a couple of rain, and so I'm just checking the, the open roses, I'm just checking them for any rain damage, and if there is some, I'll snip it out. Um, but so far, so good. So you can see that each, each arrangement is having exactly the same number of stems. So it's not really about them being, but, but they're not identical stems. You know, obviously, two, no two stems in the garden are the same, but I'm getting a sort of balanced weight. So now let's have some real weight. Let's have some dahlias. Here we go. Oh, oh yes, look at that. And it's Friday and this harvest festival is Sunday. So my dahlias are very out because these are going straight into the church and I don't know about anyone else, but in England, <laughs> our churches often, especially rural England, our churches are old and built of stone and very cold. So they are the perfect place for cut flowers. Cut flowers last forever in old English churches. And it means you can cut your dahlias when they're quite open um, because they'll be very happy in the mix. Um, so I've got some, I've got some colour here, look at that, oh lovely, and they, the ones that are still in relatively tight bud will come out a bit, the ones that are in full flower will hang, will be fine for the, for the big day. Um, and as I put them in, I'm putting them in so that they, they're not matching, they're not the same but I'm putting them in so they go in at sort of the same level. You see, that one's here and that one's here. They're, they're balancing each other. Um, a bit of height. And a bit of height. I have got some showstoppers which are coming. And then, so having given myself a bit of a base, oh yes, shall we have some cafe early dailies? Shall we have the big girls? And it's, they weigh a lot and pull forward. So by having made um, a nice base for them to go into, they will stand now and not fall. Although obviously this one is too short. So there we are, just find space for them and slip them in to the mix. And another. You don't need vast amounts of material for these. I think what's really valuable is if you give yourself the space by having a nice crisscross of flowers at the bottom, then you don't have to have your arrangements too stuffed full. Um, they can be quite loose and light. So let's have another cafe au lait each. Tuck them at the back. And that one, 
the stem is actually about four or five inches up, but it's in the water and it's being held up by the other material. So that's really worth, that's a pretty hot tip, I have to say, from, from Sunny Somerset. And we've got another one that's going to go in the back over here. There we go. And again, I go to, she's disappearing a bit, but I don't mind. She's giving a bit of weight to the back. And now, <laughs> I've got such lovely material, I can't decide what to use. Um, uh, we're going to use a few more, a few more roses. No, we're going to, we're going to lighten it up a bit. And I've got some cosmos here. And the cosmos will catch the light. Usually, usually, obviously not always, but usually old English churches face east. And um, which means that the sun on a Sunday morning coming through the altar window, the window above the altar, um, it's very pretty for the people looking at it, but it can flatten. You won't be able to see these because they'll be in the dark. The sun will be streaming in from behind. However, I'm just sniffing the ends to refresh the, the drinking cells. If the sun catches the cosmos and comes through the cosmos, it'll look very pretty. So let's have the cosmos tuck a bit of the cosmos in and with any luck the light will really make the most of this cosmos and it'll look really pretty and the cosmos will lighten the whole the whole thing up So this one here, if the light gets under it, will show up really nicely. On the other hand, <laughs> the light may not work at all, but I'm, you know, I'm doing my best. It may be a gloomy day, pouring with rain, and nothing will show up at all. It is always worth, with church flowers particularly, if you're doing them in an old church in England, where the church is likely to be quite dark. It is always worth going for lighter colours because they show up. <laughs> Often, uh, garden um, churches, I mean, are so gloomy, if you then do dark coloured flowers, they don't show at all, which is a real waste, isn't it? So there we are. A nice little, a nice little flush of cosmos going through the mix. One more of these pink. Oh, a couple more pinks. Let's use the pinks up. And you can just make sure that nothing is being squashed by any of the other material by just pulling it through. If it is being squashed, there we go. We're nearly there. Them in. And two more. It's really, really a simple process. And it is really about balance. It is not, you don't want to make flowers. When you're making an arrangement, don't make it as if it's for wherever you're making it. So I'm making them in my studio, but they're not going to stay here. They're going to be on the, on the altar in this little church. And so it's really worth imagining what that looks like. This surface is about the right height for an altar, uh, but the light will be very different. So it doesn't, if they look a bit odd where you're making them, it doesn't matter. Imagine them, project them onto the, project them onto the altar where they're going to live or wherever it is that you're making them for and stand back and have a look at them and imagine how they're going to look. And they, I have to say, 
are going to look fine. Now, what I could do is both of them have got space on the sides, and you can imagine they're going to be on the altar, so the prayer book and the cup and the plate for communion and everything will all be here, so you've got to have room for all of that. But I have got a bit of space to the side, so, and I have a few more bits and pieces, so I might just give them another rose each. Some of these roses are huge. The second flush, this year, we have a most amazing second flush of roses. They've been, they've been, they, my roses have loved, um, have loved this wet summer. They've really, I think they've suffered from drought for years. And so have, have been basically a bit dehydrated. And so all the rain we've had has really given them a boost. So that's, I'm pleased, I'm very pleased with my roses at the moment. Um, they've done well for me. Tuck this into the side here. And it doesn't matter if it really falls out of it because I've got space there. And I'll put this one over here. And I have got a little bit, just for a final flurry, I think they could do with any, again, something to catch the light. So I've got, very fond of this old bird, this one is called, oh look, we've got another cosmos, so we'll pop that cosmos in, whether it's not or not. This blue, this is Salvia uglinosa, or bog sage, and it's a bit invasive, so don't, if you, have, if you don't have much room for it, don't have it. Uh, but it likes a damp, rich soil, and it's gone berserk in my garden. And I think that true blue at this time of year, late summer, is quite hard to find elsewhere. So I'm going to pop a little bit of blue in there and it'll lift it really shows up in the colors um i'm really very fond of it it's a lovely you can sort of hook it hook it through your arrangement so it doesn't get lost and that color will show it's worth i mean you know you can be too obsessive about this but it's Worth doing a little bit um, in odd numbers, otherwise it looks as though you've got squares and straight lines in your in your arrangements. So I'm doing five each of these in my in my vases. One, two, three. So from the back, these look, look like nothing. They wouldn't work. You can't look at them from the back, these flowers. Um, but that's all right, because they're going on the altar. There we are. And that, though I say it myself, is very attractive. I'll turn this off and then give you a closer look and then finish off. Um, so hold, hold fire. So there we are, quite fully out um dahlias and lovely mix and i think on the altar for the harvest festival they will do very nicely um and they're not too high so they should fit you've got to remember where they're going i could have gone really enormous but um it's no good being enormous <laughs> when there is uh a limited amount of space and other things have to happen anyway there we go all beautiful so i hope you've enjoyed this look here i'm afraid of the flowers but um i hope you've enjoyed this little session uh if you have then do uh subscribe there's a subscription button somewhere here click the bell icon and you'll be told when we have new clips coming up 
And if it's been at all helpful and you'd like to support these clips, then do please buy me a coffee and I'll be very grateful. The link to buy me a coffee is in the bio at the top of my channel. Thank you very much and I will see you soon. Happy harvest, everybody. <laughs> Bye.